My name is Seema Ganwani Ved. I need to share with you my personal life journey, as Shruti has asked. Her question to me was, how do you go from zero to 1850 stores, nearly 2,000? Well, for me, the beginning of any story, it's great to start at the beginning. And the beginning for me is, I'm the daughter of a self-made man who left India at the age of 17 to go work in Africa. He did that because he had six sisters who still needed to get married. So he thought it was his responsibility to help his father. I'm also the younger sibling of an incredibly competitive but superbly intelligent brother. And most of all, if you can think about it, my dad could have gone to any city, country in the world, and yet he chose to come to Dubai after Africa. So for me, God already had this landscape planned. I wasn't going to have it easy. I mean, growing up in a city like Dubai, how many of you grew up in a city like Dubai or grew up in Dubai? Very few of you. The rest of you have surely missed out, I can tell you that. In this city, everything is a buzz. Everything is the tallest, the fastest, the biggest. I mean, the city rubs off onto you. So when you're actually creating a business here, there is no way you want to stay the smallest. Hence, for me, like I said, the landscape was already set with my father, my brother, and the city that I grew up in. But most of all, <laughs> along the way, I happened to also meet a guy who shared my vision, shared my big fat goal of what life should really look like. It's a funny story. Two days ago, I told Nilesh, whom most of you know, and I said to him, um, I need to do this little talk. So what do you think people want to hear about? His words were, why don't you share with them your strategy of marrying me? For those of you who are married, happily so, will understand, somehow the whole conversation becomes about them. So I said to him, but in all honesty, he's not wrong. Because for me, whether it's in life or in business, you have to have the right partner. I think a partner who encourages you, supports you, lets you take all the risks that you want to to fulfill your potential capacity creativity. So 2010, I decided to do a TV chat show. Do not Google it and do not judge me for it. He stuck a 10 meter by six meter billboard on Sheikh Zayed Road for the whole world to see. Of course, my kids loved it. My children drove past it every morning to school. Sometimes they stopped, they made their friends stop and take a few pictures and even talk about it to the fact that when my daughter went to Canada, her roommate had a fit thinking, oh my God, you're Seema Ved's daughter. I know her from TV. So they enjoyed a few sessions together or they watched on YouTube. Why did I do that? I think it's really, really important to set an example, not just for my children, but the people I work with, that you do not give up on your passion. Yes, we all need to work. Yes, we all need to make money. But hey guys, come on, you haven't lived if you don't do something creative or something passionate along the way. And I'm known to wake up every decade or so saying, I'm gonna do something different. So watch out for this decade, because something is gonna show up. Back to me and back to my journey as a retailer or as an entrepreneur. If anyone asked me, what are your go-to? I have three go-to factors that I think help make me whom I am today. My first one is perseverance. My second one is determination. And my third one is authenticity. I'll start with authenticity. We deal with 75 plus principles, brands, and counting. Our relationship with whether it's our principals or with our partners in the malls or with our employees has to be based on authenticity. Anything unreal 
will come through very quickly and it damages the relationship. And we try and portray that in everything that we do, including our relationship with our customers. Determination. People who've worked with me will tell you, I have laser-focused determination. If I decide I'm gonna do something, you can throw at me whatever you want. I'm not letting go, and I'm not changing my goal. Perseverance is my big one. Honestly speaking, if I go down my journey or my memories, we failed. We failed when we first started the business. We did a jewelry store that we failed at. We did a bookstore chain that we failed at. But hey, we dusted ourselves off, got up, and did it again. And here we are today. So to me, if an entrepreneur, any one of you retailers say, I haven't failed, then you haven't really, you haven't really fulfilled your capacity or your potential. Because taking risks and failing is a part of the journey, very much so. It reminds me of a story that is etched in my brain. I heard it at a Singularity University seminar. My daughter will... Terrible at this, but okay, thank you. So there was an Olympian runner called Jim Thorpe in the 19th century. Jim was winning a lot of races. Jealousy prevailed, and of course, be before an important race, someone stole his pair of shoes. What did Jim do? There was no sixstreet.com to buy the shoes on at that time, 19th century. He went to the closest garbage, found a pair of mismatched shoes, wore them, and won the race. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, what we're looking for these days. It's called AQ, Adaptability Quotient. No recruiter should be checking your IQ or your EQ. It should be about your AQ. AQ is what will help us to pivot and to face any challenges that life throws at us. For example, in the lockdown, when all our physical stores were shut down, we all had to pivot. We pivoted to our e-commerce platform. I'm sure a lot of you did the same. But it's all about AQ. It's all about how do you face those challenges and how can you make it work for you in spite of that. I know my time's nearly up. I will share two other things with you. If you haven't been to Singularity or haven't even considered it, please put it on your to-do list. I hope to see you there. Singularity University has the most incredible courses. No, I don't work for them. And no, I don't plan to own them either. But apart from that, I don't know if you've read Aaron Mayer and Reed Hastings, the guy from Netflix, the CEO, his book on Netflix, The Culture of It. That to me, these are the two tips that I would share that if you are looking for something new to go down the road for, please do this. I will share you one last example from Singularity University that they shared, which will explain to you why we need to be aware of disruption. Disruption that's coming to all our businesses. There was an Argentinian car wash depot. They lost 60% of their sales. Long story short, they, do, they did almost three months of investigation to find out that was it another car wash depot that had emerged? What Had the manufacturers of the cars changed the paint? They weren't sure what had happened. After three months, they realized there was a weather app that could predict with certainty for people when it was gonna rain, when there was gonna be a dust storm. So people knew exactly when not to use their cars. And that's what caused their sales to fall. If you're a car wash owner, would you think disruption was coming from a weather app? I don't think so. So hang in there, we're all on, in this together. And I hope to see more of you as we go down this journey together. Thank you, Retail and me, for this opportunity.